Welcome back to America's Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. This segment is brought to you by my company, BullRealty.com. For asset and occupancy solutions, visit BullRealty.com. Today we're talking about commercial real estate financing. A lot going on in the commercial real estate financing world where our guest is Tom Walsh. He's with Grandbridge Real Estate Capital. He's here in Studio One. And Tom, we talked about some of the various sources for financing and, and some of the rates and uh, what do you expect for rates moving forward. And it seems like another aspect of the debt market we see today is private equity. A lot of people are saying, hey, if I can get in that first position, uh, maybe that's the good position to be in at this point in the cycle. What do you see for private equity sources? Most of the private equity sources tend to play in the floating rate market more so than the fixed rate market. And uh, a space that we generically call the non-recourse bridge space. Mm -hmm which uh, you know, most of your banks historically are recourse lenders on the bridge financing. This is a, a group of lenders that do non-recourse bridge financing. That, that space has gotten unbelievably crowded mm -hmm. over the last 12 months. All sorts of people jumping in there. The result of that has been a deal that, say, two years ago might have been a LIBOR plus 550 type of deal, mm -hmm. might today be a LIBOR plus 400 type of deal. Wow. It's, a, again, a supply and demand kind of thing. A lot of people trying to get money out in that space, pushing rates down. Thankfully, because you know, we've seen LIBOR go up, you know, what, 125 basis points, I guess, uh, over the last 12 to 15 months or so. Mm -hmm. um, so, so your nominal rates have stayed steady, maybe even dropped a little bit, even though LIBOR has, has, has run up quite a bit. But that's the space that most of the private equity money is in. It's floating rate money. It tends to be um, probably anywhere from one year to five year terms. They don't really go long and on and, and much stuff there. And it's generally aimed at a, 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 tr a, a transition involved at, as, as to whether it's a renovation of a property or whether it's a releasing of a property. Something's going to happen to a property that's going to positively impact its, econ its economics, and that's that's the space that most of that yeah. money goes into. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And you know, the, one of the other things that seems to be growing in the commercial real estate world is, is crowdfunding. So um, are you seeing crowdfunding make any significant dip in the financing? Not, uh, not significant. Mm -hmm. uh, they're out there. Um, we did a deal with a, with a crowdfunding source last year, mm -hmm. uh, which was the first one we had done. I know there is at least two or three people that are actively looking for business. And in was the that market. a first position loan? That, that was a first position loan, yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. Um, there are some, uh, I guess, some things that people haven't quite got their arms around in our world. As, as to how the whole thing works. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, like most things, I think it's, it's probably, it's an evolution, not a revolution. We probably, five years from now, we'll talk and they've got 10% of the industry or something yeah. along that line. Yeah, well, that's an interesting space. So what about default rates, Tom? I think, you know, we all talked about, oh, there's loans done in 05 and 06 that maybe at the height of the market, uh, maybe coming up in 10 years. What are you seeing, what have you seen for defaults? What do you expect? Defaults in, in, in relative terms are almost non-existent right now. Um, people's loan portfolios are doing extremely well. The big, I guess the big worry that everyone had was the CMBS loans done in 2005 through 2007, which, which was an extremely aggressive market at that time, mm -hmm. including full loans, 75% loans on 10-year interest only deals. The big fear was we're going to see that stuff rolling over and a lot of it was not going to be able to be refinanced just because of the general economics of it. And that fear really w was, was big in, in, in the early part of the recovery. But what happened was is the recovery kind of ran along and caught up. Yeah. You know, so, so as soon as you hit 2016, a lot of those deals actually could be refinanced. Yeah. Um, so we haven't seen the problem that a lot of people anticipated with the old CMBS. I mean, they're out there. There's yeah. a handful of them. I think every special service probably has a handful of loans that are working with people. But in any large way, we have not really seen the default problem. I think bank portfolios 
are, are and, and life insurance company portfolios are superb right now. Yeah. We have life insurance company clients that don't have a delinquent loan nice. in their portfolio. Yeah, well that's good so. to hear. Well Tom, if you can, leave our audience with some, some tips and strategies for refinancing a property or financing a new acquisition or development. First of all, let's think about if you've got a, a loan maturity coming up uh, on an eight or t eight to fifteen million dollar commercial property, for example, uh, how's, how far out in advance should you get of that maturity to start looking to see what you're going to do? Probably no less than six months. Okay. Um, and, and, and what that involves is not getting yourself in a, into a corner. In a bind, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. If you wait to ninety days. And, and, and that's when your open prepay window is at the end of a fixed rate loan and you wait to the 90 day mark to start, it's gonna take a while to figure out the best avenue to do this and, and you'll get yourself in a corner where you don't have time to really shop the market and, and try to make a decision. You have to take it, if someone offers you a deal that works, you take it. No one wants to be in that situation, right. all right? Six months, you start talking to a, a Grand Bridge or whatever your mortgage banker mm -hmm. friend is um, if it's a bank situation, most people do that directly with their banks. Yeah. But start with six months so you can really strategize as, as, to, as to what the best alternative for you is. There are so many people that, that when we turn around and ask them that, you know, when they come to us and we, and we say, okay, you know, what's your long-term strategy mm -hmm. on this? Because that tells us the best product to put them into, they look at you with a blank stare, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I mean, I know I have to refi this loan. Yeah. I'm like, I, you know, are you gonna own it five years, seven years, 10 years? Are you, right. are you thinking about if someone offers, offers me the right deal, I'm gonna sell it, you know, under the everything is for sale kind of concept, you know? All, all of those different answers send us in different directions. Right. Um, and, and you really need to think about that stuff and part of that is allow yourself some time to do that. Right, you know? right. Yeah, I do asset consulting for some clients where they have multiple properties with multiple tenant uh, uh, lease uh, maturities and, and loan maturities and in different markets and sometimes even in different sectors. And, and yeah, that's what we try to get out of them. Look, let's look at your total picture yeah. and, and your mission and, and then we can make some some determinations of what's best to do with with all aspects but especially with the, the financing side of it what are some other tips for borrowers to to get the best deal out there um, give yourself time use a a some sort of professional source that will uh, that, that knows the breadth of the market mm -hmm. you know there are some people out there who who they're CMBS experts mm -hmm. some brokers out there there's some people that have a bunch of bank relationships. The, I would say, larger professional mortgage banking companies, we have all of those. Mm -hmm. And as, as I mentioned earlier, based on what your strategy is, we might be picking out of that group, you know? Right. It also, on how much you want to borrow, too. If you've had a deal for 10 years and it started out at a 70% loan, and it's now a 52% loan, and, and your attitude is, we like cash flow, let's just refinance it, cover the closing costs, all right? That, that tells us that's a, life, that's a life insurance company execution. We're gonna get you a really sweet deal on that from a life co. Mm -hmm. If you tell me that, well, it's a 52% loan, but I wanna borrow back up to 70, all right? then you know that's a pretty big cash out for a life insurance company that might be more of a CMBS execution mm -hmm. then. Um, so just start early, figure out what your strategy is, use a professional mortgage source that knows all the different segments of the market, yeah. not just one of them. And if you give them enough time, right. they should find you the best deal for your situation. Tom, great information as usual. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Nice to be here. And thank you for joining us around the country on America's Commercial Real Estate Show. And until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for America's Commercial Real Estate Show.